Vigilante is a story about Dexter Gooding, who has been involved in crime and served time, was deported back to Barbados, and then finds his peaceful village become, has become a, a center for crime. And he sets out full of passion and guilt to change that and becomes a vigilante. And in his quest for justice, he meets Amy, a white Barbadian woman who's got the same goal, but she's using very different weapons to get there. In this program, we're gonna talk about one of the key issues in the movie, race. And we're gonna to talk to some of the actors in the movie, some of the people who work behind the scenes, and also just the average person on the street who can tell us about what their ideas are about race and about how this movie will affect people and how we live our lives. I played the part of uh, Linda Edgehill and she played the part of Melissa, who was my daughter in the movie. And um, we just had such a great time at the production and we got the opportunity to travel all over. We went to New York and New Jersey and Boston, uh, West Palm Beach and even Jamaica. And what I realized as we were going is that not only were we being an ambassador for the film and for Barbados, but we were also being an ambassador for the idea of interracial friendship, which was surprising to me. That question after question I got, wherever we would go, at least one person would say, so are they really friends? As if that were the most, strange, the most unbelievable thing about the whole film. And um, Marcia Weeks, the writer and direct, writer director, and I um, have had several conversations about race. And uh, I grew up in the South, in, in Texas, in small towns there. And uh, contrary to what you might think, I actually was raised to be rather colorblind. And Marcia uh, teases me and says it's in my DNA. Because even as far back as my grandfather, um, I've had a very different idea of what race means and what, how to treat people who don't look the same as you. Um, he lived in a town where outside of town, as you drove in, there was a sign that said, don't let the sun go down on your back nigger. And it was actually worth more than your life to stay in there in that town if your skin was dark. Uh, my grandfather was a mechanic and he was one of the only people who would fix a black person's car if they broke down. And what he would do is, while he was fixing the car, he would take the black person to his, his family's house and keep them in the house while he was fixing the car. Because um, the KKK was real, the Ku Klux Klan was a real threat, and it was dangerous for them to not be somewhere um, safe. So uh, my mom's told me stories about, you know, people staying at their house during the day while my grandfather fixed their car. And um, she never really knew why he didn't get attacked. She said she thought it was half because he was a God-fearing man and everyone respected him, and half because he was a big guy with a bad temper. <laughs> I am from Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I've been living in Barbados for almost seven years now. It's been a exciting ride. I've learned a lot and experienced a lot in the past few years, and Barbados feels like home. Um, so when we talk about the different aspects of what it's like to be a Canadian living in Barbados, and specifically a white Canadian living in Barbados, it's, uh, it's been a bumpy yet easy ride, because I don't necessarily see myself as any different, which can sometimes cause a problem, and sometimes be a real blessing. And then in my own life, whenever I was in primary school, we moved to um, a small town in Texas. And even though segregation was long gone off the books, the town was still very segregated. Um, every black person in the town lived in the projects. And the projects were, oh, they were a terrible place. There, were, there was no grass. Um, if you wanted to play outside, it was in the dirt. And uh, worst of all, it was downwind of the meat, pa meat packing plant. Uh, so it smelled terrible. Um, my dad was a Baptist minister. And uh, we had something called Vacation Bible School. 
and my father wanted to invite all the kids in the town have a bicycle parade, have us decorate our bicycles with crepe paper and drive through town and hand out invitations to everybody to go to Bible school. But by everybody, he included the children who lived in the projects. And some people in the church were fine with that, but there were a couple of powerful deacons who said that if he did that, they were gonna starve us out. They were gonna stop paying him. And um, my father said, if you can show me in the Bible where it says these children aren't invited, then I'll change my mind. Other than, but if you can't, then I'm gonna go ahead and invite them. And if you choose to stop paying me, then that's fine because you're not my provider, God is. So we had our bicycle parade and we rode through town with the crepe paper flying and rode into the projects. And I don't think there was probably ever a more surprised group of people um, to see the white preacher walk into the projects, standing on invitation, shaking their hand, and all these little white children with uh, the, the bicycles decorated, handing out uh, invitations for Bible school. And um, the big deal that year was we had a snow cone machine. And um, some of the kids came. And we all sat and ate snow cones together and had blue tongues at the end of the day. Um, so I guess when Marcy and I were talking, we were both of us feeling like race has entirely too much bearing on how we treat each other. In the year 2000, Dr. Venter and the scientists at the National Institute of Health came out with a draft of the human genome. And all of the scientists unanimously declared that there's no such thing as races. We're one race, the human race. So I've, I've learned and I've, I've met and I've been uh, introduced to so many people since I've been here. And they've been from such different backgrounds with such different views. And uh, I think it's a privilege. I, I feel like I get to see the best of every angle of this island. Um, Work-wise, my, my job allows me to go into churches and encourage people to, to go out and do what God's called us to do. And I don't, I don't get to pick and choose or see who would be the best, but God helps reveal that to us. And some of the things that I get to see is that God has no specifics. He's not like, I'm going to use you because you come, come from this background or because you have these physical features. Now, I should, when I say that, I should take back that God does use people with special looks and special backgrounds to reach certain people. He's created us unique, which is so cool. Well, one of the things we've talked about is that scientifically and biologically, we are all the same under the skin. Mm -hmm. And I'm told you have some an experience you'd like to share about that. Yes, because, you know, like, um, if th th there's this silly notion that um, somebody white is separate to somebody black and we're not as I said we're we're different on the outside but we're the same inside same blood the same organs and um, some years ago I was very sick I had to have major surgery um, I came home and um, after a couple of days I started to hemorrhage and it was really bad I was on the way out by the time I got to the hospital which was town St. Peter Mm -hmm. at the time um, I had very little blood left when they told me I thought what um, I even went into shock and so on but anyway um, my type of blood uh, my husband could give me his blood um, and the other man that gave me his blood was a very good friend godfather of one of my children and he was a black man he was a black friend and so I had my husband who is white and a, a very good friend who is black give me their blood. Um, you know, we can do that. I think it's wonderful. Yes. So I may look white, but I have some black blood. Oh, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke really because our blood is the same. Our blood, we all have red blood. I don't have red blood and, and someone else have purple blood or it's, right. it's the same. And so I think that's great. And that sort of brings us together that sure. I'm white, I can give a black person blood, black person can give me blood. I think it's wonderful and I, I love that. I'm just, I'm glad to be able to tell that story. According to the Constitution of Barbados, all citizens are equal, irrespective of their color, their race or their creed. But again, 
it also depends on individual, what is one's attitude. And I think attitude plays a very important part in whether someone likes you or whether you have a problem with any individual. My dad had always taught us that when you look at someone, you do not look at that individual as irrespective of that person's race, color, or creed. You look at that individual as your friend. And once you do that, you look at that individual who is facing you as your friend, then you will have less problem in your life. It does not mean that we in Barbados are living in a utopian society. Uh, of course, you always have your downs and ups from time to time. But generally speaking, when we look at the chaos and confusion around the world today, I think that Barbados can be considered as an oasis of peace and uh, living together in harmony. You know, um, scientifically, there is no such thing as race. Yeah. That's, that's something I don't think a lot of people know. But it's actually been proven that any two people on the planet are 99.8% identical genetically. So you and I are more alike by orders of magnitude than yeah. we are different. And that if you need blood and I have the same blood type, I can give you blood. Exactly. If I need a kidney and we're a tissue match, and we could be. It's just Black all about, white. it's, it's, it's very surface mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And um, I think that um, that's something we don't focus on, sadly. We, we're far more um, hung up on, hung up on, on yeah, hung up on the, the things we can see yeah. on the outward and, and far when we're so much more alike than we are different. Definitely, on, 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 the, mole on the molecular level, yes. as you mentioned, we're basically the same. It's yeah. just that I have more melanin than you, exactly. <laughs> essentially. But that shouldn't determine where you go in life, you know? No. It, it shouldn't, and it's it's so sad that that we allow the amount of melanin they have to to keep us back. Absolutely. It's sad. What what about the script inspired you? Um, I think it was just that they were trying to to show um, that within the community there's a lot of misunderstandings, mm -hmm. um, and that there really are more similarities than differences amongst the different groups, and we really haven't come out, I think, and promote it or explain that. And um, that was what the whole movie seemed to be about. So do you feel like that's sort of uh, a topic we should be talking about in a different way than we're talking about it now? Um, in yeah, the media or? I think um, one of the reasons I wanted to get involved is, as Inna said, about misunderstandings. And we met um, Dave and Marcia um, through a few years um, ago, and our relationship has grown to a point where we could openly discuss race. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting, as Marcia told me, that um, Dave had never been invited into a white home apart from ours to have really? dinner. So I was surprised at that. And then it was quite funny because he was shocked to learn that I ate yam and cuckoo and <laughs> breadfruit <laughs> and flying fish because he just thought that we ate pasta. You know, that white people <laughs> ate completely different stuff. Um, okay. But, you know, as a kid growing up, people would ask me, well, what was your favorite food? And my favorite food was cuckoo and pigtail, you know, uh -huh. I couldn't get enough of it. So in that regard, you know, um, we're the same in that um, I grew up on the same foods as most black Bajans. My name is Saber Nakuda. I am a Bajan Indian and a Muslim. I came from India when I was about 10 years ago. Uh, in 1958. Uh, I went to school at uh, Wesley Hall School and I also lived near Wesley Hall School in a place called King Street. Actually I was the first one my dad sent for from India and I came on a BOAC plane by the way. Uh, of course I went to school at Wesley Hall School and uh, as a child you know I started to mix and build bridges with Barbadian uh, young school children because then they would look at me as an Indian and in, and in those days there were very few East Indian young people who would be going to primary school and uh, I think I had it all because here all the girls would come and touch my hair and said wow you know 
Uh, and of course, in those days, I couldn't speak English because when I came from India, I did not know any word of English. Um, and so they were teaching me English. And again, I have been so lucky that just a stone throw away from Wesley Hall School, there were this school for poor whites in Barbados, also in King Street. And there I had my bicycle with my ringing of the bell, you know, and the girls would also come out, these white girls. So I had the best of both worlds. And I was really bridge building bridges among the black Barbadians, and I was also building bridges among the white Barbadians. And so building of bridges began from the day I came from India. Until the present time, I've been building bridges, and I believe that we should, as one people, we need to learn to live with each other. Uh, irrespective of our faith, irrespective of our color, or irrespective of our race. I went to a black school, mainly black children. It was a church school, and uh, my, my best friend was black. It, you know, or, well, brown, because there are different shades of black, too, if you want right, to really right. get into this thing, man, you know. But I find today, it's like, let's, let's stop this hatred mm -hmm. that has grown. I, in America, it's really scary, but Barbados is very different from America, mm, okay? Right. And when I look back on growing up, mm -hmm. because I did spend five years in Santo Domingo when I was very young as well, from five to ten, and Santo Domingo is a whole different story. Mm -hmm. that, that, again, racism didn't come into it. We, you know, it, and, 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 so you're saying racism it's, isn't a Barbadian it's, concept? It's something that's no, come in? No, it's something that has come in with, with television, etc. You know, this whole gang thing. I may be completely wrong. I mean, I may be living in a, in a, in a little fairy cottage somewhere. But I never saw that. And Barbados has always been peaceful, protected. We've never had mm -hmm. to fight. You know that? This yes, island has never had to fight for anything. We had wonderful infrastructure, everything worked, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and this embraced all people. Yes, we had a class distinction. Okay, but you're saying it's not based on racism. Well, or it wasn't. Uh, I'm hard, I can't judge that because I never came from there. You see what right. I'm saying? I don't know. So as far as you know, as, as far as your far experience. As I, my experience, it was not. Both of my children are married to black people. Okay. Both, two of my grand, well, two of my children, I have five. Two of my grandchildren are, are mixed race, mm -hmm. which is incredible. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful because uh, why not? We are... We're all people. Uh, you know, we as individuals, we are black and we are Chinese and we are Indians and we are white and we are brown and so many different colors and so many different races, you know? We sh and we should be like a rose. We have rose and everybody loves a rose. Whether that rose is red, whether that rose is pink or brown, you know, rose have so many different colors. So we as God's children, as people, we also are made up of different color, a different race. And so that we should be like a rose. Our fragrance should be such that when people come in contact with us, you know, uh, they would say, I wish I could stay with that individual a little longer. But we need to inculcate that sort of fragrance within ourselves. We need to inculcate that kind of attitude within ourselves. And so I think that as long as you have that positive thought, positive action, and that you look at people not on the basis of their religion or their color or their race, and you look at an individual as your friend, and I think that we should not have any problem. And so myself in Barbados, fortunately, I consider myself as the most fortunate among everyone else because everybody in Barbados are my friends.
This is a beautiful community. But over the last six months, crime has reared its ugly head in our community. I mean, it's too dangerous. You can't trust them. They see me, they shot my arm, they see me. Help, look, they see me there. Did they see your face? Yes. Dexter? Isn't he the ex -con? Yes, but hey, look, he said he changed. You need to trust me. Someone's watching us. They're coming! I can't, I can't, I can't do this, Dexter. As all of you know, or most of you probably know, our property was robbed. Here's another ambulance. Lord, protect my children. Dexter, we need money. What are you doing? Right on time. Get out. Get out. Apart from a few of you and Faith who lives in Baker's Village, no one else is willing to help in an after-school program for extra credits in this course. I'm thinking of staying in Baker's Village for a week. Are you serious? Yeah. Whatever plantation it is that you throw our offer, if it was you, I would go back on it here. Please. I want yes, your ass on here. Yes, sir, you don't need to leave here. Please, I work for them. And in all that time, they never once asked me to give my opinion about nothing in the house. So how the hell she get to come in here and give speech? She brought her black bastard in here for, huh? It's between we, between we. Boy, this is raw tennis. Put down the gun. Let her go. Shoot the man, Roach. Shoot the man. You lose, Dexter. You lose. <laughs> I just want to thank you for watching today and uh, encourage you to go out and see Vigilante the Crossing. And if you're interested in purchasing any of the other quality productions by Step by Step, please visit us on our website, www.thevigilantethecrossing.com. And we also have a Facebook page. Thank you again.